A tug of war between conservationists, the timber industry and the New South Wales government is threatening the survival of one of Australia's most iconic creatures, the koala. The state government has pledged to open a national park for koalas covering thousands of hectares. But a report by the Australia Institute claims it's deliberately going slow on the opening of the park or ending logging and land clearing until it first secures another way to make money from the trees, which would involve exploiting the forest for carbon credits. Roger Maynard reports from Bellingen on Australia's mid-north coast. This is one of Australia's most pristine forest areas, stretching from the coast to the Great Dividing Range. It's a paradise for wildlife and in particular the koala, which is under threat from a loss of habitat and countless other problems, including road traffic, disease and bushfires. Thousands were killed in the wildfires of 2019, some of the injured being treated at koala hospitals like this one. Pink. Pink, but for every pink. koala Let's saved, many more have died, the result of an increasingly hostile environment triggered by climate change and logging. But now there's renewed hope for the koala in the shape of a unique national park which will supposedly protect them from the local timber industry. Unfortunately, there are a lot of fingers in this pie, including the state government, which owns the forestry corporation, which in turn runs the timber industry. The Great Koala National Park has been delayed in part because the government's holding consultations with stakeholders. However, a big reason for the delay in the gazetting of the park is the government wants to monetise the trees for carbon credits and it doesn't want to gazette the park until it's got a carbon credit method in place and approved. At a budget estimates meeting in the New South Wales Parliament, Premier Chris Minns hinted that he wouldn't halt the felling of trees until he was certain of making money from carbon offsets. There are many industries, many companies, governments around the world that are desperate for carbon offsets and um, we'll be looking at jurisdictions like New South Wales in relation to that. While logging has been temporarily suspended, conservationists fear it could resume at any moment, much to the anger of locals like Jill Everett, who's manning the barricades today just in case the loggers return. We're here to stop equipment to getting into the forest, which is in this area here. Um, my day started at about 5 a.m. I left home this morning to be here at 6 a.m. because we thought there was forestry equipment coming in. Fellow activist Anne see, Coyle, who's lived in these parts for the past four well, decades, is equally determined to stop the lorries because she believes there's so much at stake. Koala is at an absolute brink. This is our last chance. If we don't make the most of this chance, it's all over for the koala. No one knows for sure how many koalas live in this forest because they sit high in the trees and are difficult to spot. But over the past 20 years, it's feared the population along the east coast of Australia has halved. Delays affecting the future of Australia's Great Koala National Park could have serious consequences for the future of Australia's much-loved marsupial. Without a ban on logging, conservationists fear that the koala population could become extinct by 2050. Susie Russell, Vice President of the North Coast Environment Council, believes the problems facing the koala are symbolic of a much greater existential threat. Well, it's the canary in the coal mine. If the koala goes extinct, we can expect a whole range of other uh, other species of animals to become extinct and ultimately that will lead to the collapse of society and uh, as we know it so really if we can't save the koala we're not going to be able to save ourselves. It's a grave warning and one that strikes at the very centre of the Australia Institute's report. It's a critically endangered species that is dear to the hearts of Australians and people all over the world. And it would be a tragedy of immense proportions if koalas were allowed to die out in the wild. The Australia Institute concludes the forests don't need monetising, but preserving. It's a view with which few in these parts would disagree. Roger Maynard, CNA, near Bellingen, on the mid-north coast of New South Wales.